MG has just effectively gutted the price of the MG4 here in Australia. You'll get about 10 grand off the base model MG4 Excite 51, and with the balance of the range, they're handing you back between 5 and 8 grand, depending on just how old you want your brand new electric car to be when you buy it. They're calling this 5 to 8k backhander a factory bonus. I'm calling it a somewhat desperate attempt to clear a glut of MG4s, which apparently dates back to last year. This is, of course, sensational news if you are in the market right now for a cheap EV. But it's a bit of a poopy-flavoured sandwich if you're one of the 3,387 Australians who already stumped up the full purchase price and bought an MG4 earlier this year. I think you'd agree, that's rather a lot of poopy flavoured sandwiches. Imagine cutting off all the crusts. You'd want to wear gloves. I'm John Logan from Auto Experts. I'm coming to you. New cars cheap at Australia only. Website. Card. Let's get right into it, shall we? MG has once again made a bold move towards affordability in a bid to make technology and safety-packed electric vehicles more accessible to all, with a limited offer on all models of the MG4. Okay, so that offer, if you're in the market, is effective now, and they claim it will expire on the 31st of October. So let us not be dilly-dallying if that's you. No word yet, of course, on what happens to prices after that. And it's a huge wedge off the price of the base model in particular, isn't it? Ten grand off, that's got to be like 25%-ish. They'd have to be A, taking rather a substantial bath on every one of them at that price, and B, kind of backhanding every dealer per sale. So there's that. Now, in light of that, does anyone actually believe that they were all just sitting around one day in the boardroom having one of those meetings about striving to make another bold move towards affordability in a bid to make technology and safety pack EVs even more accessible to all Australians and thereby solving the cost of living crisis, etc., so that we can all perhaps just go back to pooping Dior cufflinks here in the lucky country? just like in the olden days? Or is it far more likely that they got a call from one of Lu Jianzhen's hench people over in Shanghai demanding to know why they hadn't sold more MG4 EVs, like, you know, a little bit closer to the number that they promised they would sell roughly a year ago. This report is sponsored by NordVPN. Get four extra months of Nord for free now. It's totally risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee at nordvpn.com slash AEJC. Online security threats are everywhere, but obviously you don't have to be the next victim. And that's where NordVPN comes in, locking everything down efficiently in the background. Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC now. Every two-year NordVPN plan receives a huge discount plus four bonus months on top for free. nordvpn.com slash AEJC. I'll put a link in the description. Using NordVPN is dead easy. Just subscribe, download the app and connect. One click later, your IP address is shielded and your traffic is encrypted across as many as six of your devices. Nord is, of course, the fastest VPN on the planet. And it costs only about as much as one cup of coffee every month to keep your data, your identity and your devices secure. Masking your location also means you'll be able to access streaming and other services that might be geo-blocked where you live. Plus, you can continue to watch your favourite content when you travel. Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC now. Boost your security, get a huge discount and enjoy those four extra months completely free on every two-year plan. It's all totally risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash AEJC. I'll put a link in the description. Let's get a few things straight, shall we? Cars are a low-margin product with ridiculous upfront capital costs. And this means you can sex up 
price slashing any way you want, but it's actually the fastest way to go out the back door in the automotive business. It's also the fastest way to piss off everyone who just made the commitment to your brand by paying the full price. Because not only would they have acquired the vehicle substantially cheaper had they just waited days or weeks or months, but the slashing of those prices also slashes the value of the depreciating assets in those driveways, doesn't it? This process is immediate and there's nothing that anyone can do about it. MG Schittsville's bigwigs certainly know this. Like, they're not idiots. So one can only assume they've taken the considered decision to assault their own brand loyalty in the marketplace in this way, in exchange for a few quick sales now. Why would they do this? MG4 is a revolutionary model for us, and while we are starting off with more than 1,000 orders, our goal is to achieve around 2,000 per month for this model. Ah yes, that might be it, mightn't it? Peter Chow there, Chow Down would be his rap name if I was running the world, I suppose. Give it up for Chow Down, ladies and gentlemen. The cheese of MG Schittsville, in other words, apparently talking up MG4 at the launch of that vehicle about a year ago now, a bit more, quoted there by those self-aggrandizing bastards <laughs> at carexpert.com.au on the 10th of August last year. Honestly, dude, how could you trust anyone or anything that uses the word expert in its title? Like... Ego out of control, or what? Where were we? Ah, yes. Chow Down, offering to sell 2,000 MG4s every month up front, which would be more than one in four EVs sold in Australia, but hey. And actually selling only about 400 or 450 per month on average so far. Shanghai would almost certainly notice a disparity such as that. Perhaps there's a car park somewhere in, I don't know, Rooty Hill or something, with 1,500 new MG4s in it somewhere, and Lujian Zhong's dudes have finally got around to inquiring as to when the remuneration for those might actually be forthcoming. This might not be as absurd as it sounds, right? See, according to this hilarious table here from MG's press release concerning its bold moves and single-handed assault on the cost of living crisis, etc. It's prepared to hand you back eight grand if you buy a non-base model MG4 from model year 2023. But you'll only get five grand back should you buy this year's model. This implies, pretty frickin' stridently, I would argue, that they've got a bunch of 2023 MG4s just languishing somewhere out the back in almost October of 2024. So I'm smelling the distinct waft of overstock crisis. But of course, I might be wrong. The current campaign starts with our MG4 Excite 51 starting at 39.90 and then factory bonuses of up to eight grand can be availed across our other trims, including the high-tech Essence 64, the long-range 77 and the powerful X-Power. MG Motor Schittsville's commercial cheese, Giles Belcher there, the Belch. Another legendary Aussie would-be rap name. If only they let me run the ship. That's what it would be anyway. I'd suggest that availing. <coughs> availing is the kind of word a person uses in, I don't know, an official statement to authorities following some nasty business at a gentleman's club. I'm not suggesting that the belch is employing that word in that context, or has ever, merely that one would use that kind of word in those circumstances, perhaps. Like, availing oneself of the opportunity to demonstrate one's appreciation for a particular performer's commitment to excellence in their art. 
That sounds a whole lot better, I would argue, than telling the cops that you slipped a 50 into the waistband of some stripper's G-string. And that was the end of it. We truly believe the MG4 is the EV for everyone. The Belch, again there, availing himself of not only believing, but truly believing such a thing like, dude, is there even a difference? Is the state of believing different to the state of truly believing? I'd have to consult Professor Harry G. Frankfurt on that one, perhaps. Okay, anyway, so they sold 3,387 MG4s in the first eight months of this year out of 57,701 total new EVs sold in Australia, which means that so far, almost 6% of EV buyers in this formerly great convict colony agree, or roughly four people in every 1,000 light vehicle buyers so far this year I think it is the car for everyone. Hashtag room for improvement there. Don't get me wrong, dude. The MG4 is a good EV, and as much as that sounds like one, it's not actually an oxymoron. It's a really good EV, and the price is right, and the battery size is not ridiculous. I'm looking at you, Kia EV9. But I'd suggest that what we're seeing at the moment is the fact that EVs are, in fact, emphatically not for everyone, are they? This is happening here and around the world. It has to be for a reason. It's not just some nose jerk reaction. The initial wave of electric euphoria, i.e. the capital E, capital V evangelists, have their EVs in their driveways now. And clearly, it's getting much harder to sell EVs to mainstream car buyers for whom electric car ownership is not functionally a religion, some sort of obsession. We're just talking about ordinary people. You know, people who are potentially amenable to EV ownership, but for whom it really has to add up objectively in many different ways. And also, plenty of first-time EV buyers have pretty much gone full heretic on that and kind of come back to combustion because the fantasy and the reality have failed to line up. You know, owing to the crap state of public charging infrastructure and the inability of the grid to supply electricity to previously spruced charging upgrades, it's all just languishing a bit and lots of people just cannot charge at home. Despite government incentives and wholesale discounting of EVs, sales of EVs are up only 1.4% so far this year in Australia, whereas diesel sales, which are not incentivised in any way, are up 6.4% off a much more mature base. Just saying, dude, like, look at the cars Australians actually want when they talk with their friggin' wallets. The Belt also pointed to Australia's high home ownership rates and the fact that we live essentially in the corner penthouse of Melanoma Central, which would be my words. He talked about high incident solar radiation, tomato, tomato, and the belch concluded, we've got a lot of sunshine and some of the most expensive electricity in Australia, with the majority of our country receiving many hours of sunshine per day when averaged throughout the year, it makes complete sense to install solar and recharge your car from the sun. Right, so I am no commercial cheese of some car import operation. I'm just a fairly mediocre engineer, right? But I would argue strenuously that the median EV owner, for them, charging from home using solar is pretty much a fantasy. At least doing it consistently or even 90% of the time. Let's say you need to charge your MG4 Excite 51 once every week on average, right? That seems reasonable. Like, you're going to use one full battery charge every week. And certainly you could trickle it in every day, but the total energy consumption for one full charge a week is going to be 51 kilowatt hours divided by the approximate 
80% charging efficiency, which is going to be about 65 kilowatt hours per week, which is what you need to produce coming out of your array, okay? That's the amount of excess solar that you need to be producing every week, and you need to plug the car in when you are actually producing it in real time. Otherwise, it's like instantly gone, back into the grid, whatever. Most people who buy new cars, I'd suggest, have real jobs. They're just not at home during the middle of the day, are they? When solar production is at its highest. Alternatively, I suppose, you could strap a dedicated 12 kilowatt hour battery to the side of your house for about six and a half grand plus installation and you'd need to dump its contents into the car every night, kind of without fail, overnight for the term that you own it, right? If you want to do this, this is the only other way. If you've already got the panels, you're not getting much change from about 10 grand to set up a bespoke battery to essentially trickle charge your EV with 20%-ish of its capacity each night, which is a big spend when you compare it to the baseload power overnight at roughly, you know, whatever it is, 14 cents per kilowatt hour or something. What most people with an EV and home solar actually do in practice is leverage Australia's traditionally and astonishingly high scientific illiteracy levels, and they just tell anyone who will listen some version of some crap about charging up using their home solar, when in fact they are mainly using baseload power, which in Australia is roughly as filthy as running a diesel dual cab ute if you actually bother to crunch the numbers. Dude, if you don't understand thermodynamics, I suppose anything is possible. So if you've got an EV and home solar, then yay, save the planet. You go, girl, or I don't know, them, they, whatever. This discount, don't get me wrong, the discount on MG4 right now is great if you are in the market for an EV right now and if that MG4 is the right EV for you. In that case, you've got to go for it. It's historically unbeatable. But it is quite the shit sandwich, isn't it, if you already own an MG4. And if you want to make that jump to quote-unquote <coughs> sustainable driving, then you need to be pretty much a unicorn home solar user. And dude, even if you are standing there right now in front of the mirror looking for all intents and purposes like a freaking horse, only with, you know, dirty big white horn protruding from your forehead, there are going to be times, such as, I don't know, winter or heavy vehicle usage or long distance commuting, consecutive overcast days, whatever, where you will still absolutely be grid dependent for your driving from A to B tomorrow. The laws of thermodynamics are quite inflexible on this kind of thing. You actually can't break them. Although Chris Bowen continues to try every day, seemingly. So there's still hope, I suppose. Car makers are really struggling to sell EVs to ordinary car buyers. Most people out there in the market now just don't want an EV. Despite a lot of carrot here, an increasing governmental stick overseas, especially in the EU, it just seems everyone presumed that the initial wave of EV euphoria would continue unabated. And then, problematically, reality just intervened. <laughs>